first by um, talking about one of the ways that you're involved with the North Carolina Dance Festival this fall. Um, we, you're gonna be helping coordinate, or you are helping coordinate um, the statewide movement wave that we're planning for September 18th. Um, so you're trying to get all of the details settled for the Charlotte um, leg of that, that wave. And um, you know, when I, when I approached you with the idea for the movement wave, you really like jumped right in. You got right back to me and said, yes, that sounds great. What, um, like, what about the wave made you respond in that way? Um, well, I think two things. I mean, I am a super big dance project fan and North Carolina Dance Festival fan. So the opportunity to be part of the 30th season is very exciting. Um, and I think this is like, felt like one of the ways that I could really, like the best way for me to participate. So um, an organizer of things seems to be the main role I am playing in my world right now. Um, and um, I'm just, I, I was working on a project sort of concurrently, which is on the back burner now because things are changing. Um, <laughs> but, um, but this idea that sort of we've all been separate and like, that's really hard, but also found ways to move together. Um, and that's really inspiring, I think, like figuring out how can we still be in community together? How can we still be movers and artists um, even when we're quarantined or you have to be socially distanced and all the other things. Um, so this feels like a, you know, sort of a movement celebrating the resilience of the community over the last year and a half, but also um, an opportunity to like sort of send some goodness out into the universe. I think there's um, something really valuable about like people coming together. I mean, there's, you know, something valuable about people coming together and thinking the same thing or saying the same thing, but I think there's something even more valuable about people coming together and moving with the same intention mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, bringing balance and order to the chaos. Um, it feels like we're in a particular time where we really need synergy mm -hmm. and to be reminded that we're connected even across distance and social distance right. and virtual distance and physical space. Um, so it felt like really in line with some of the, the projects I was already interested in and some ideas that I was already like mulling over. Um, and yeah, so super excited. I love this idea of the state dancers being more connected, but also just um, an opportunity to get all kinds of different dancers in Charlotte mm -hmm. together in sort of like a fun celebratory way. Yeah. Um, instead of like, oh my God, let's figure out what we're going to do because there's a pandemic and then there's the movement for Black Lives and then there's the, um, we're having a whole funding restructuring here, mm -hmm. um, which is terrifying. <laughs> so um, just having this moment to like sort of come in and celebrate um, being connected feels, feels like such a important thing right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that was really, um, I mean, you said it so well, that, that sense of being connected across all these forms of distance. And, you know, I, I know I'm really hoping from this movement wave that, you know, people who are able to participate in their communities can have that experience on sort of a local small scale with their, with their, the people in space around them, but also to feel connected beyond their own community, you know, to like know that they're a part of something bigger that's happening certainly that day in the space of a couple of hours, but sort of on a grander scale, just in general, like we, we have been so separate, uh, feels necessary to, to come back together in intentional ways. Yeah, for sure. And I think also this reminder that, um, I think it gets easier, it gets easy to think while we're like stuck in our homes or even in our small communities that the challenges that we're facing are singular or unique. And of course, everybody's experience with COVID is unique in its own way. But I think there is this collective challenge and collective resilience that we have all, you know, experienced in different ways. Mm -hmm. And there's some value in being reminded, like, I'm not, I'm not doing this by myself. Like there's, there's a whole community of dancers, not even locally, not even just locally, but across the state that are, you know, innovatively trying to figure out how do we keep making art and participating in art and community, even, even as we maybe go back into 
<laughs> back into our houses again. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I think I was, when we first started talking about this, things were looking really different for the fall. Mm -hmm. And it felt like we were on, not out, but like we were headed in a positive you know, place. Mm -hmm. And, and so I think there's real value in it in celebrating what we've been through in the last two and a year and a half and celebrate it. You know, I thought this was sort of going to be a celebration of coming back together and then this mm -hmm. like continued momentum toward togetherness. Um, and now as, as Delta comes in, it feels like less, the trajectory is like going back into our homes and separation. Um, so while the weather's nice, mm -hmm. <laughs> it feels really important to gather safely Mm -hmm. and and sort of remind ourselves that we're all in this together before we perhaps end up only back on zoom or mm -hmm. virtually for a while right yeah well and i know i know plans are still in the works for uh what's happening in each of the cities how how do you hope that people will participate in charlotte or what can you share about the details you're working out right now yeah, so um, really exciting. We're talking with our bridge for kids. They won't be in session yet, but we think we're going to be using their their physical outdoor space, which is also right near Aldersgate, which is a um, a community a community for seniors, and also really near three homes for um, uh, Umar homes, which are for um, like independent living homes for people with disabilities. So we're hoping that we can then like bring the seniors and the um, the women from the, the three humor homes to join us as part of it, which feels like such a fun partnership. And Arbridge is going to send out some information about it and that they reach um, mostly immigrant an Im immigrant community. They work with kids mm -hmm. and they won't be back in session yet because they start back at the end of September. But um, just that idea of being able to like bring these non people that maybe don't identify as dancers. We know that everyone is a dancer, right? but not everyone knows that they're a dancer. So <laughs> um, we hope to bring in some dancers that maybe don't identify as dancers. And if they want to just come watch and like enjoy being outside with us, or if they want to participate like that will be possible too. Um, so that feels really exciting. Um, we are hoping to base our Charlotte um, score, uh, utilizing some local artists, some mm -hmm. local music artists as part of that. Um, so I'm in some conversations with some really great artists here. And I think that's going to be like a lot of fun and, um, you know, give, you know, it'll just be their recorded music. We're not going to have mm -hmm. anyone performing live, but um, I think dancers knowing about the amazing music that's happening locally, like gives us the opportunity to use that when we're yeah. teaching and stuff and, um, and celebrate each other more, which is something I had, I sort of was forced to get into in the last year because mm -hmm. I, um, I was doing some stuff like on Facebook live or Instagram live did you be so careful about not getting muted? Right. Um, so I fell back on, I was like, oh, well, these local artists, A, they've said verbally that I could use their music, but B, like it doesn't get muted as often because <laughs> it's not as recognizable. Right. And um, and so it's been, anyway, so I feel like I've made some great music connections and it's fabulous music. It's amazing. Um, so I feel, I'm not sure that I would have like engaged with that so much if it wasn't for the pandemic. And I'm excited yeah. to, continue to share that with other dance artists. Um, and yeah, um, so, and we're planning it to be like a, about an hour long, you know, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. two hour event with the opportunity to sort of like practice it, run through it. We're going to have it written out so people can show up right before and like read mm -hmm. through it. And then also have some uh, visual and auditory cues throughout so that it's pretty easy to follow along. Yeah. Um, and that it can sort of meet dancers wherever they are. Cause like I said, I, I believe that if you can breathe, you can dance. So, um, one, one dancer's version of the score might look really different than another's. And that is so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so just making sure that everyone can like, feels confident in, in what they're doing at whatever, right. however they're, they're meeting the score. Right. And I know that's been a big part of our conversations among the coordinators and the other parts of the state too, just that, you know, wanting this to be um, a, a structure that can welcome people in, regardless of their experience with, with dance or movement, that it's meant to be something that you don't have to attend rehearsals ahead of time. You don't have to have any specific dance knowledge, just a willingness to, to move, move <laughs> and explore 
um, explore movement with other people. So that's that's really how we've designed it. And each each city is sort of interpreting what that means in slightly different ways. But um, I'm excited by the ways that that it um, can really be very welcoming to um, to people, whoever they are, and whatever kind of experience they have.